Yeah, I'm not really sure what happened. <laughs> no. He needed camera. Alright, we good? Yeah. Alright, so we've got three lessons left, and my goal in this post AP world haze that we live in is to just keep exposing you to things that are important. The other day we looked at like proving derivative rules. I want to make sure that when you go to Rice and University of Houston and all the other amazing schools that I cheered for yesterday, you need something about that. <laughs> That you're ready. Like, here's the thing. Like, you you've survived with style, a Calc A B B C experience. But often, when you go off to college, your next college professor might have some expectations that aren't really consistent with what your A B B C experience has been. And I want to close some of those gaps. And I've talked to Janet. I've talked to Arthur. I've talked to you know the, like all the other folks that have come before you. And the things we're going over are things that they've actually recommended would be really helpful to do. So. One of those things is this beautiful triangle over here, oh. known as Pascal's Triangle. And I'm wondering, has anyone heard of Pascal's Triangle before? You've heard of Pascal's Triangle before? I've heard when? The term. You've heard the term? You've oh, heard it, it before? Is. When? Do you remember? Uh, yes, last week, because of the, the normal calculus kids. Oh. No, the normal calculus me. kids compared to the amazing <laughs> calculus <laughs> kids. <laughs> 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 I remember I heard it in geometry, geometry. Mr. Oh. Dawson. Dawson. He had like the, like the spiral thing, and then one time we asked him about it, and he was like, and he explained that, and then he explained Pascal's triangle. Oh, okay, then then you guys already know all this, so just like get to work. What? Okay. So, so this is Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle is one of these mathematical structures that is filled, truly filled with mind-blowing mathematics. And what I want you all to do with your partner, your soulmate for the period, is to find as many patterns as you possibly can in this triangle. <laughs> there are lots. Do not do any coloring yet. We're not ready to color, but you're looking for patterns right now. Take a couple minutes, find as many patterns as you can. I want you to like spot it and then write it out. What's the thing that you see? <laughs> So far, how many patterns so far? I mean, if you had not been so brutally interrupted, you'd have all of them by this point. Right. Uh, in the second row, the right. 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 how many patterns? Dozens of patterns here. Oh, every other room is a 
All right, friends, let's talk about some patterns that we see. I'll take anything from anybody. It could be a really obvious pattern. It could be a not so obvious pattern. I'll take anything. David, get me started. Uh, so what, I, what we notice is that two numbers that are on top of a certain number add up. Okay, so so give me an example. So like on that one, on that one, that yep. one, one, and then so you add those two up to get two. So one plus one is equal to the two that's below it. Mm -hmm. Now that works there. Does this work everywhere? Like if we're looking yes. for patterns, and I really need you like math lenses on here. I'm looking for patterns that are true everywhere. It does. Everybody pretty much okay? Yes. Okay, that's called the triangle addition pattern. Like 21 plus 35 is 56. 15 plus 6 is equal to 21. It's a triangle addition pattern. Some people kind of like box things off in a triangle this way to kind of see it. Okay, good. What else? You're frozen for a little bit. Other patterns that you're noticing? Yeah. Um, like the second row, like horizontal, like the fancy ones? Ah, the, well, let's call those diagonals. Okay, diagonals, uh, they go increase by 1, so like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so 13. All the time? Uh, so you're noticing along this diagonal, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, we're like adding one every single time? Does that work with all the diagonals? Oh, okay. So that's a pattern that is specific to this diagonal. This triangle addition pattern seems to be true everywhere, right? So I want like, what's the pattern and where do you see this pattern? There are more. Oh my god, there are so many more. I'll take anything from anybody. Oh, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five. Where? <laughs> uh, in the like the diagonal or the horizontal pattern, one, three, six, yeah, yeah. One plus two is three. Three plus three is six. Plus four plus five plus six. Okay, so we've got like this guy here is plus one, then it's plus two, then it's plus three, and so on and so on and so on. Is another pattern for sure. Anybody see anything else? Celeste, you're frozen for a little bit. There are so many other things. Lewis, what do you say? They all start the same. Like, when you go like this, they end the same. Okay, what I, what I see you doing is like, when they start like this, they all kind of end the same, so you're like on the ends working your way towards the middle. Does that work everywhere? Does that seem to really even like down here? 1, 11, 55, 165, that this seems to be true. There's a fancy word for this? Symmetry. Symmetry. It has symmetry. In fact, you might want to say you have like vertical symmetry. Imagine you take out your samurai sword. Unfortunately, you're not walking around with one right now. You've got this like vertical symmetry. Everything to the right of the line balances what's on the left of the line. Anything else? Add up the rows. Add up the, no the numbers in the rows. One, and then two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. These are all two to a power. These are some, some, not all of the patterns that exist within Pascal's triangle. I don't need you to master Pascal's triangle. I need you to have been exposed to Pascal's triangle. That's really what today is all about. Everybody mostly okay? Okay, mm -hmm. you have got two minutes to study Pascal's triangle and get ready for the quiz. The quiz, what? Lewis, the, what the hell? <laughs> I have taken my AP exam. The quiz is you will have one minute to recreate the first eight rows of Pascal's triangle without looking. Enjoy your study time. The first eight rows. The first eight rows. Rows are like this. I let row zero, one, two, three, four. Let's say you have to get it to really do this well. To seventy. You gotta get to there. Yeah, let's. Oh, to the seventy. Yes. Okay. Let's see what you're doing there. Okay. Well we have a minute to bring that. Yeah, you've got like a minute to get ready. Oh. You need to mentally prepare yourselves. Take a snapshot with your uh, your memories. 
the uh, little digital cameras nine, that you have installed in your brains. I can see I can see Holly Mo, he's taking snapshots, tapping his head. And then, so two to eight, because you need to put a Thirty seconds. Most important assessment you're going to take in your whole life, at least today, between now and 9:39. Not bend over in front of the camera. <laughs> no one needs that ever. We had to make the old shape. The little the the hexagon. No. Okay. Where are you going to write it? You are going to flip the page over. Okay, here we go. Flip the page over. And there's space at the top. Check yourself without looking. Generate the first eight rows of Pascal's triangle. I have cleverly taken Pascal's triangle off the board. Do not slide your paper to the end of the table and look up at it. <laughs> Do not hold it up to the light. burned out your remaining brain cells last Tuesday. Ten, ten, five, one, one, six, fifteen, twenty, fifteen, six, one, one, seven, twenty, one, thirty-five, thirty-five, twenty-one, seven, one, one, eight, twenty-eight, fifty-six, seventy, fifty-six, twenty-eight, eight, one. How many of you guys got all those rows right? Here? One, two, three, four. Granola bars over here. Granola bars over here. You're sharing granola bars over here. Granola bars back there. Here you go. Wait a second. Did I say one? <laughs> Maple brown sugar, oats and honey. Anybody have a peanut butter one out there? I'm a peanut Yeah, I know you all are eating the peanut butter ones right now, and you're like, mm -hmm. okay. We got this under control. Now, here's the thing: like that's all fun and good, and you know, I thought you guys would do just fine with this, but there's there's more. I said there's a lot of patterns out there. There's a there's a whole lot of patterns out there. And this part that we're going to move into now, the algebra of Pascal's triangle, is really where the power comes in for Pascal's triangle. So I want to look at this. I want to look at the expression a plus b squared. And you guys all know that a plus b squared means a plus b times a plus b. And if I were to multiply this out, maybe you do the box, you're going to get a squared plus ab plus ab plus b squared. But that's really the same as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay. Just multiply it out. I want you to take a minute. A plus B cubed, A plus B to the fourth, A plus B to the fifth. There is a reason for this. A mind-blowing reason for this. There are no accidents in this class. Except that one. Except for that day I really had to pee. <laughs> You're expanding a plus b cubed, a plus b to the fourth. Do a box if you need to do a box.
plus b cubed, well that's a plus b times a plus b times a plus b. I could multiply these first two out again, or I could just say I already know that's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared times a plus b. I'm going to multiply further, a cubed, 2a squared b, a b squared, a squared b, 2a b squared b cubed. Combine like terms, a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3a b squared plus b cubed. How many guys have a a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3a b squared plus b cubed? Good, your algebra skills are strong. Keep going. A plus B to the fourth and A plus B to the fifth. and living through what I call dysfunction junction. The hormone during control at that point. All right, so I'm seeing some good stuff here. A plus B to the fourth. If all goes well, Paul, get me started. A plus B to the fourth, what's the first term? A, a to the fourth plus 4A four cubed. A to the fourth plus 4A four cubed? B. 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 6a squared b squared. 6a squared b squared. 4a plus b cubed. 4a b cubed. Plus b to the fourth. Is everybody okay with that expansion? Anybody have a plus b to the fifth? Not there yet? Okay. Get there. powers, you're like, and it's going to end with b to the fifth. Yeah. There's a to the fifth plus 5a to the fourth b in the next term. Plus 10 a cubed b squared. Agree. Next one. 10 a squared b cubed. I agree. Plus 5 a 
e to the fourth power plus five. Okay. Those are all good. Look at a plus b squared. Look at the expansion. I, hold on, hold on. You're not going to talk to me yet. Look at that expansion for a plus b squared. a plus b cubed. a plus b to the fourth. a plus b to the fifth. There are patterns here as well. Have a conversation with the folks that are around you, your life partner for the next 25 minutes. What are you seeing here? <laughs> what patterns are you seeing now that maybe you didn't ever see before in your life? seen the pattern? Yes. I, I would maybe be a little bit hesitant to call that symmetry, right? If I focus on the A's, what's happening with the A's? No, I was talking about his symmetry. Oh, his symmetry. You, you can actually put it like in the middle and you can see that the coefficient actually. Right. There's symmetry in the coefficients. There's not symmetry in the exponents. The exponents are decreasing by one every single time for the A's, but they're increasing by one for the B's every single time. There's another thing happening with the exponents. I wonder if anybody else sees it. The A's are always decreasing by one. The B's are always increasing by they one. Add up to a they always add up to, for like the example of A plus B to the fifth, they always add up to five. Then we have some symmetry with the coefficients, right? The coefficient is the number in front that's not an exponent. So the coefficient over here? One. One. Five. Ten. 10, 5, 1. Familiar numbers, right? And I was telling you, this is literally just the representation of the, the, the graph of the, the model we were looking at. Those numbers, the 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, are coming from Pascal's triangle. Yeah. Right? Let's look at a plus b, the whole thing squared. 1a squared, 2ab, 1b squared. Where, what row is that coming from? Two. Row, two. row 2. Yeah, oh, yeah. One, and I, I numbered them that way for a reason. 1a cubed, 3a squared, b, 3ab squared, plus 1b cubed, 1, 3, 3, 1. Three. That's row 3. What about row 1? Oh. Row 1. Is it one? Is yeah. Right, row 1 would be a plus b to the first power, which is just a plus b. And coefficients here is 1. Row zero? One. 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 Because you have two powers. A plus B to the zero. You gotta stretch a little bit here. A plus B to the zero is just gonna be one. There are no coefficients. That one doesn't completely fit the pattern. Does everybody okay? Like like you take courses in things called like discrete math, where you're like looking at things like this, you're looking for deep patterns, so that now let's see how smart you all really are. Oh. A plus B to the sixth power, one minute. No multiplying. I am not interested in seeing the biggest box ever. Andrew, if I'm over here, come the friend seat. Thanks. A plus B to the sixth. And then I want to rock and roll that we're going to do the calculus of Pascal's triangle. Love it, love it, not in 
interested in seeing the biggest box that has ever existed. Looking for cleverness here. Somebody get me started. I'll take anything from anybody. First term, Lewis, and then you're frozen for a little bit. A to the sixth power. Yep. Uh, plus six a to the fifth times b. Love it. You're frozen. What's next? How much? A to the fourth times b squared. Okay. A to the fourth b squared. I agree. A to the fourth b squared. I agree with that. Oh, uh, yeah. We need the coefficient. And the coefficient. Fifteen. Okay, good. How long you're frozen? Yeah. Uh, plus 20 a cube, a cube, b cube. Plus 20 a cube, b cube. You're frozen. What's next, Ale? Plus 15 a squared times b to the fourth. Plus 15 a squared times b to the fourth. You're frozen. Eventually, I will freeze you all. Except one. Giselle. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're like, freeze me now. <laughs> yes, you can be frozen. Andrew Lynn, like, plus b to the power of six. <laughs> Easy peasy. We don't have to do. We don't have to do the expansion. Now here's the problem. What if you don't have Pascal's triangle in front of you? What if you don't remember the coefficients and where they come from? You guess. Okay. I want a plus b to the 10th power, please. I'll give you another minute. I'm feeling kind. a plus b to the 10th. And all those that were previously frozen are now unfrozen. Hey. Poor Myra. She's never going to know any of this stuff. This next one's going to blow your mind. from the 10th row. Even if you're not sure about the coefficient, I hope everybody's comfortable with what the next term has to look like. The a's are decreasing by one, the b's are getting bigger all the time. And so it's just a matter of what's the coefficient over here? This should be 252, 252, a to the fifth, b to the fifth. The next term? Anybody just call it out. It's going to be 210, a to the fourth, b to the sixth, plus the next term? 120, a to the third, b to the seventh. Next term? 45, a squared, b to the eighth. Right, we're working our way backwards through those coefficients now. Plus the next one? 10, a to the ninth. What is that, b? 
plus b to the 10th. Everybody got this under control? Okay, so now it's time for a new pattern. Wait. A, B to the 9th. Thank you very much. Okay, new pattern. I want to look at the coefficients a little more deeply. So first one is 10 times 1 is 10. Nine times ten? Ninety. Oh, not forty-five. Divide by two. Eight times forty-five. I'll tell you, it's three hundred and sixty. Divided by three. Divided by three. Is one hundred and twenty. Yeah. Could you say you're dividing it by the coefficient of b? The coefficient of b? Oh, I mean by the exponent of b. The exponent of b. The next term, 7 times 120, 840. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Divide by 4 to get to the next one is going to be 210. 6 times 210 is 1260. Divide by 5, 252. 5 times 252 is 1260. Divide by 6, 210. And so, right, you might even say, like, oh, you've passed the symmetry point. Stop the pattern, just use the coefficients again. Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. These are some of the patterns that exist within Pascal's triangle. We could spend two or three days on Pascal's triangle, and, and we're not, I'm sorry. We've, but we do have 13 more minutes to do some uh, calculus. Ooh, thank God for calculus. Oh. More mind-blowing stuff coming your way. For those of you that want a proof, this is close to a proof. What we're going to do is I want to go through and I want to prove the derivative of x to the 6. Anybody remember what the derivative of x to the 6 was? Oh, sweet Jesus. I almost threw up there. Derivative of x to the 6. 6x to the 5th. We know this. We don't even bother with it anymore. But way back in the day, we would do the difference quotient. We'd look at the definition of the derivative, and the definition of the derivative says it's going to be f, right? If f of x is x to the sixth, it's f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, right? This is what the definition of the derivative would tell us to do. We know the result. We know how the story ends. But let's go with this anyway. In order to do this, the reason I wouldn't have done this back at the beginning of calculus class is, well, what would you have to do to do x plus h to the sixth? A lot of boxes. A lot of boxes. Now, what I hope for your smarticle particles, you're making a connection here. Maybe it's not a's and b's, but it is a sum raised to a power. Take a minute, see what you can do. x plus h to the 6. Be careful with coefficients, variables, and exponents here. Let's see, that first term has to be x to the 6, right? Not a, x's. We're doing a replacement here. Next term? 6x uh, to the 5th. Nine. 6x to the 5th times h. Once you've established that, I hope the rest goes pretty easy. Lewis, what comes next? 15x to the 4th. 15x to the 4th. Should be h squared, right? Carmen, what comes next? Uh, 20. 20. Power of four. No, power of four. It's cubed. It's cubed. Cubed. That's probably. That's it. Okay, 20x cubed, h cubed. And I'll lay what's coming next. Uh, plus 15x squared times h to the fourth. 15x squared, h to the fourth. Uh, Giselle, what's coming next? Uh, 6x, h to the fifth. 
Okay. And David, what's coming next? Oh, um, H to the H to the power of six minus x to the sixth all over h. Finish the story here. What's going to happen? What are we canceling out? The x to the sixth cancels out with the x to the sixth, but that still leaves us a whole lot of stuff. A whole lot of stuff. Now you can factor out an h from all the terms in the numerator, right? Everything now just has h's, and I have an h in the bottom ready for me to divide. I am so ready here. Okay, so what's going to happen, we're going to get 6x to the 5th, and then what, 15x to the 4th h, 20x cubed h squared, 15x squared h cubed, 6x h to the 4th, plus h to the 5th. Gosh, that doesn't look like the derivative. Plug in 0. Plug in zero. We're taking the limit as h approaches zero. h gets small, and as h gets small, zero, 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 zero. Final answer? 6x to the fifth. 6x to the fifth, and in the language of a formal proof, ta da! Derivative of x to the sixth is 6x six to the fifth. QED. QED, put a little box, put a smiley face, whatever. I'm a ta da kind of guy. I'm, I'm showy. Everybody good? I should draw this <laughs> No, be kind. Okay. All right, so option for you in your last <laughs> eight minutes here. Option number one, we're going to circle back around to the algebra. We're just going to do one or two of these so we can kind of like see it and be like, oh my god, there's more. Option number two involves coloring. I like color. Okay. Okay, so. <laughs> Fine, be though. Also, option number two results in an opportunity for you to do one more homework assignment and turn it in and get a 100 tomorrow. Oh, okay. Just saying. Just saying. Okay, in order. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Except he has no hair. Oh, my bad. No, it's there. He has no waist, so that's good. <laughs> nice stick figure. But it's like in high school. Okay, so in order to do this, you're going to need three different colors. And I would recommend maybe you start lightly shading first because you're going to get some of these wrong. You're just going to get some of these wrong. Okay, so for one of the colors, one of the colors is going to be multiples of three. This is one color. Use whatever color you want. Multiples of three that we see in Pascal's triangle. Some that we see. Three. 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 Six. Okay. Three, six, nine, 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 at some time in your life, there was a way that you would determine if something was a multiple of three. Yeah. How many of you guys remember this time? It would have been like third grade, oh. fourth grade, no, you were first learning multiples. There was a trick. There was a trick to see if something was divisible by two. There was a trick <laughs> to see if something was divisible by five. Lewis looks like he's ready to die if I don't call on him. Lewis. Does it feel like a number that you Oh, you're thinking about factor trees where it'd be like 21 is 7 times 3. God, I was so excited when Caroline did that. <laughs> oh my god, I was like, I'm like, factor trees! There was a way to test a number. Um, if the number, if all the digits in the number add up to a, like a multiple of 3, then the number is divisible. Does anyone remember ever hearing this in their life? Yes. Okay, Ali, what, what was the rule again? Uh, I remember if it was all three numbers. I think it was the last two. Definitely it has to add up to a multiple of three. It is all the digits that have to add up to a multiple of three. The, I think the rule you're thinking about involves looking at just the last two digits. Anybody remember that rule? There is a divisibility rule that involves looking at the last two digits. But it's for divisibility by four. 
If you needed to know if something was divisible by 4, you'd look at the last two digits because all the other place values, you're in hundreds, you're in thousands, you're in ten thousands, they're all divisible by 4. So let's, let's give it a test. Something like, uh, let's pick a big number, um, 462. I would say 4 plus 6 plus 2 is 12. Is that divisible by 3? Absolutely. So in whatever color I'm using, I would shade that in and say, oh, okay, there it is. In your second color, one more than a multiple of three. One more than a multiple of three. Examples include? 16. 16 would be an example because 16, we know, is 15 plus 1, 15 is a multiple of 3, 16 is one more than that. 4 as well counts. Uh, 16. 16. Okay. Any other? One more than a multiple of 3? 10. Okay, I'm using a different color, but it's hard to see the different color. Everybody, everybody good? Okay. The, the trick that you used here to see if something is a multiple of 3 also works for one more than a multiple of 3. So for example, if I took, I'm trying to think of a good example here. Uh, no, 220. 220. If I add up the digits, I get 4. 4 is not a multiple of 3. But guess what? It's one more than a multiple of three. Four is three plus one multiple of three plus one. Thanks for fixing that. So four would be colored in with your <laughs> second color, and you'd want to use your symmetry properties. Um, the A B kids were really like confused about what do you do with the number one, and what do you do with the number two? Does one count as one more than a multiple of three? I mean, yeah. Uh, three, three, zero three, zero is a multiple of three. So one is one more than a multiple of three. So whatever color you're using here, you're going to use on the one. So pick a pretty color. It's your border. <laughs> Everybody get this under control? Mm -hmm. And then your last color is going to be two more than a multiple of three. And what you're going to do is you're going to see another pattern. You're not going to get the pattern in the next two minutes, but this is going to get you guys started down the road. So if you want to borrow my marker so you can have the pretty colors, okay, it just helps. Thank you. Make sure I get these markers back. The security alarm will probably go off as you try to leave the room, but it's okay. Just keep running. Pretend it's Walmart. Keep running. And this is still just some of the patterns. God, I love me being a mathematician. Seriously, this is a far better way to end the year than working on a project, right? Yes. Let's just keep like learning the things and have no real homework. This is what I do well. 
I trick you into doing things you wouldn't do otherwise. Like your apes homework. I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. I want to cheer a lot at graduation. All right, friends, I will see you later. It is that time. You do have to go someplace else. I don't know where that someplace else is, but it can't be here. Can we stay here? No, you cannot stay here. Why not? Because